Today I'm in Coventry, I'm at Fanuc UK's headquarters on Anstey Park and with Andy Armstrong uh, there is an event happening here all about automation on the 29th, 30th and 31st of October. So you need to save the date, put that date in your diary. Uh, it's not too far away now Andy and one of the things that you're going to be showing is uh, your new solution here for automating in this instance, a robo drill. Could you tell us about it? Yeah, Paul. This is uh, this is a new machine tending solution that we've uh, produced for uh, the marketplace. Um, really gives us the option as a bit of an entry level in terms of machine tending, whether that's one robo drill machine or two robo drill machines for people to to leave an unattended operation for prolonged periods of time. Now, this isn't the first time you've had a machine tending, and, and you've got a lot more in your portfolio. But what's different about this particular offering? Um, this particular offering, Paul, we've, we've come up with a, a concept and a solution with one of our partners really to, to, to create a standard tray loading system, um, to utilise vision systems to, to look at billets and, and then with that vision camera to, to take the parts with the robot and load them into our um, robo drill machines. So as it stands here we've got like a, a carousel of trays or we've, we've, we've got six trays here these will have um, components that will they'll be picked out of here put into the robo drill but what we're saying is this vision system it doesn't matter where they're going to be put in the tray the vision system will identify them and then the grippers will pick the component up and put it in the machine is that about right? Yep yeah, no that's perfect um, and again you know different Billet sizes can be accommodated. Uh, in this particular example, a billet of around about a 100, 120 millimeter square um, can be loaded into the trays. I think we've got three tray positions in each, uh, three positions in each tray, um, and and really from there, you know, it's. Uh, it, it's, it can be flexible. Grippers can be changed very easily. Trays and uh, loading stations can be changed very easily as well. The first thing I thought of is w when I need to take the trays out when they're full of finished parts and I need to replace them with new trays, does that mean then I'm experiencing downtime or can I do that when the machine is actually still running? No, you can do that when the machine is running. We, we have a side door on the robo drill. There's inherent safety within uh, the cell of the, the robotic um, ten cell that we have. So you know, we can access and change the trays as and when they are uh, completed and, and ready for new um, incoming billets. And what if the trays weren't the right uh, method for me and I wanted a conveyor? Can I, can I adopt that too? Um, in this solution, we um, is set up with, with, with a tray carousel, um, but again, you know, it's uh, fairly straightforward for us to design a system with an in-feed conveyor and out-feed conveyor and still use the vision um, to track and, and pick um, the billets of material ready for loading. First thing jumps out at me, and I'm glad we've got this camera angle here, is actually the size of it. You're utilising the height as opposed to the sort of width and the depth, aren't you? Is, is that part of, the, was that part of the, the idea? Yeah, the design brief really was to minimise the footprint. Um, we, quite, we have a small footprint with our RoboDrill product. We don't need and don't want to create um, too much space in a factory footprint. Um, Floor space is key, um, and um, hopefully with a cell like this, we can actually get two robo drills connected together with a single unit, um, and to really utilise the um, the capabilities um, that we've designed into the system. Good point. So we've got a robo drill to the left here, but you could have a robo drill installed on the right as well, and this could feed both machines. Now, my question to you is: a lot of engineers will be watching this, and they'll be going, "Yeah, but that's going to cost me." tens of thousands of pounds or whatever the figures are um, the machine's going to cost me tens of thousands of pounds you know that's a big outlay you know aren't they just better off buying a second machine tool and um, yeah there's always an argument for that but you know you still need to load that machine tool how are you going to do it you're going to put manual labor in there there's there's operational time here it's a case of calculating and looking at the unattended operational hours uh, and utilizing and getting the best efficiencies out of the the machine and the machine cell uh, that you have in place there was one of your particular customers not this system but one very similar with the same method i remember speaking to and he he calculated and this is interesting that he was getting a 40 percent utilization time out of his machine when he put the automation on it it went over 80 so he doubled the productivity of the machine therefore it was actually cheaper to buy this than to buy another machine tool yeah absolutely and you, yeah it's it's one of those things you know it's the machines can be stood around waiting for for people and operations you for sure you're going to increase the um, efficiencies and utilization of any equipment if you can automate it you know a lot of people now you know we, we, they need to be sort of 90 95 percent um, 
efficient uh, with, their, with their equipment to be able to generate profit um, that's going to buy the next level of equipment they're going to invest into. And the great thing about this, I know it's only just, it's, it, we, we're probably the first people to see this other than a customer that's already bought two. So uh, that's a pretty good success story in itself. Um, just final point, Andy, different payloads, different grippers. Uh, really, it doesn't matter the size of the parts. As long as they fit on the machine tool, you will be able to lift and load them as well. Yeah, we can, uh, we can design this solution to, to fit all um, part requirements that, that, that uh, will fit within the robo drill. Existing robo drill users too. So just got a robo drill at the moment, but they could add this to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, just a, um, some modifications with the side door um, to the machine. Um, the interfacing, as we've done um, displays with you previously, is relatively straightforward with uh, automation um, onto a robo drill. So, uh, so really, you know, the, it, it, it's a flexible add-on solution that uh, customers can consider for existing standalone equipment. Great stuff. You've seen it here on camera, but you can actually come here to Coventry to Fanuc UK's headquarters on the 29th, 30th or 31st of October to actually see this uh, solution in action amongst other automation solutions of which details are on the Fanuc website as well as the MTD website. Certainly a event you should be coming to if you're interested in getting the best out of your manufacturing. Thank you very much, Andy, for your time. Okay, thanks, Paul.